The Cadillac Seville is a luxury car that was manufactured by Cadillac from 1975 to 2004, as a smaller size top-of-the-line Cadillac. The name of Cadillac's first small car was selected over a revival of La Sol and the GM design staff's preference, La Scala, primarily because, notes GM marketing director Gordon Husberg, it had no negatives. The initial suggestion was in fact Leland, honoring the mix founder, but it was rejected because most buyers wouldn't get the reference and because Henry Leland had also founded Cadillac's rival Lincoln. Origin of the name Hundreds of suggestions were considered, including, Merlet, Sierra, La Mancha, Canterbury, La Euro Unregistered Trademark Eclipse, Urbana, Lenovo, De Integro, Medici, Debonair, Berkshire, Caraval, Road America, Concept 2, Americas, Leland, Minuet, Camelot, Renaissance, Councillor, and Seville. After painstaking research, La Sol was the top pick, with St. Moritz a distant second, trailed further behind by Seville. A troubled past and difficult pronunciation, respectively, cleared the way for Seville's use. Seville is a Spanish province and the capital city of that province, renowned for its history and its treasures of art and architecture. The Spanish master painters Diego Vila Zquez and Bartolomé copyright Esteban Murillo were from Seville. The Seville name first entered use by Cadillac as the designation for the two-door hardtop version of the 1956 Cadillac Eldorado. 1960 was the last model year for the Eldorado Seville. 1976 a Euro 1979, the Seville, introduced in May 1975, was Cadillac's answer to the rising popularity of luxury imports in the U.S. from Europe, such as Mercedes-Benz and BMW. GM planners were becoming concerned that the division's once vaunted image as the standard of the world was fading as the 1970s unfolded, especially among the younger generation of car buyers. Thus, the Seville was designed with the idea of winning back young import owners. Over time they had evolved becoming quite luxurious and even more expensive than the much larger Cadillacs. As the market share of these imports continued to climb, it became obvious that the traditional American automotive paradigm of bigger equals better was no longer in full effect in the marketplace. The Seville became the smallest and most expensive model in the lineup, turning Cadillac's traditional marketing and pricing strategy upside down. In addition, Imports were popular with a younger audience while Cadillac buyers were heavily slanted to the over-50 age group. The Seville was thus part of an attempt to rejuvenate the MIG's image. Full-size design prototypes were created as early as winter of 1972-73. Subsequent design prototypes looked more edgy. Initially based on the rear-wheel drive X-body platform that underpinned the Chevrolet Nova, the Seville's unibody and chassis were extensively re-engineered and upgraded from that humble origin and it was awarded the unique designation K-Body. Cadillac stylists added a crisp, angular body that set the tone for GM styling for the next decade, along with a wide track stance giving car a substantial, premium appearance. A wide chrome grille flanked by quadruple rectangular headlamps with narrow parking and signal lamps just below filled the header panel while small wraparound rectangular tail lamps placed at the outermost corners of the rear gave the appearance of a lower, leaner, and wider car. The wraparound tail lights might have come from a design sketch of a rejected Coupe de Ville concept. Seville engineers chose the X-Body platform instead of the German Opel Diplomat in response to GM's budget restrictions a Euro GM executives felt re-engineering an Opel would be more costly than the corporate X-Car. Another proposal during the development of the Seville was a front-wheel drive layout similar to the Cadillac Eldorado. This proposal also met with budget concerns since the transaxle used for the Eldorado was produced on a limited basis solely for e-body production, alongside the GMC motorhome of the mid-1970s. This was the first time Cadillac began engineering one of its vehicles based on components previously used in a Chevrolet model. Introduced in mid-1975 and billed as the new internationally sized Cadillac, the Seville was almost 1,000 pounds lighter than the full-size Deville. The Seville was thus more nimble and easier to park, as well as remaining attractive to customers with the full complement of Cadillac features. 
more expensive than every other Cadillac model at $12,479, the Seville was modestly successful in the marketplace. It spawned several imitators, including as the Lincoln Versailles, and later the Chrysler LeBaron Fifth Avenue. To ensure the quality of the initial production run of Seville's, the first 2,000 units produced were identical in color and equipment. This enabled workers to ramp up to building different configurations. Total 1976 Seville production was 43,772 vehicles. Early Seville's produced between April 1975 to the close of the 1976 model year were the first Cadillacs to use the smaller GM wheel bolt pattern bolt circle. The 2003 Euro 2009 XLR also uses this pattern. The first Seville's shared only a strict minority of components with the engineering starting point, the GMX body. The rear drums measured 11 in and were similar to the ones used with the Nova 9 C1 and A body intermediate station wagons. Starting with the 1977 model year, production Seville's used the larger 5 lugger Euro 5 inch bolt circle common to full size Chevrolet passenger cars, Cadillacs, Buicks, Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs and one half-ton Chevrolet GMC light trucks and vans. It also received rear disc brakes, a design which would surface a year later as an option on the F-body Pontiac Trans M 1975-76 models had a mandatory vinyl top due to the fact that the roof section was originally tooled up in two parts. The rear section around the C-pillar was pressed especially for Cadillac, and a regular X-body sedan roof pressing was used for the Ford parts. Due to customer demand, a painted steel roof was offered beginning in 1977, which required a new full roof stamping. 1977 Seville production increased slightly to 45,060 vehicles. The engine was an Oldsmobile sourced 350 cubic inches V8, fitted with Bendix Bosch electronically controlled fuel injection. This system gave the Seville smooth drivability and performance that was usually lacking in other domestic cars of this early emissions control era. Power output was 180 horsepower, gas mileage was 17 mpg in the city and 23 mpg on the highway and performance was restrained with 0 to 60 mph taking 11.5 seconds. A diesel 350 cubic inches LF9 V8 was added in 1978 the first diesel engine offered in passenger vehicles in America. As a result, the engine was known to be poor in both performance and reliability due to the fact most owners treated it like a gas engine. The Seville was manufactured in Iran under the brand name of Cadillac Iran from 1978 to 1987 by Pask Hodro, which was known as Iran General Motors before the Islamic Revolution. A total of 2,653 Cadillacs were made in Iran during this period. This made Iran the only country assembling Cadillacs outside the U.S. until 1997 when Cadillac cattle was based on Opel Amiga and built in Germany for U.S. market. Cadillac BLS, built in Sweden for European market, but never available in U.S. market, was introduced in 2006. Even though Cadillac Alanti had its Italian origin, its final assembly was done in the U.S. Equals 1978 Seville Elegant e equals. From 1978 through 1988, Seville was available with the Elegant e package. For 1978 this package added a unique black silver two-tone exterior paint combination and perforated style leather seats in light gray only. Real wire wheels were standard as were a host of options. In 1979, a second color combination was added, a two-tone copper shade and a matching leather interior. In 1985, a monotone paint combination became available. However numerous dual shade combinations remained more popular. The price for this package increased over time beginning at US$2,600 in 1978 and peaking at US$3,995 in 1987 and 88. 1978 marked the sales peak of the first generation Seville, with production totaling 59,985 cars. Equals 1978 Cadillac Trip Computer equals 
The Cadillac Trip Computer TripMaster was a unique optional feature available mid-year during the 1978 and also the 1979 model years at a cost of $920. US this option replaced the two standard needle type gauges with an electronic digital readout for the speedometer and remaining fuel. It also replaced the quartz digital clock with an LED display clock. The trip computer also included numerous calculations at the touch of a button on a small panel located to the right of the steering wheel. These included miles to empty, miles per gallon, and a destination arrival time. Though preceded by the British 1976 Aston Martin Lagonda sedan, Seville was the first American automobile to offer full electronic instrumentation. Although the 1978 Lincoln Continental Mark V was available with a miles to empty feature, Lincoln did not offer full electronic instrumentation until 1980. A digital instrument cluster was not available on the Seville and Eldorado again until their 1981 through 1985 configurations. Although the trip computer itself was no longer available, the new for 1980 electronic heating and air conditioning controls, and a new for 1980 electronic fuel data system on the instrument panel, replaced some of the functions that were provided previously. Equals 1979 Seville Gucci equals, in 1979, Seville was available with an aftermarket package provided by a Miami-based firm. An agreement with Gucci, the famous Italian leather goods and clothing company, produced a limited issue Gucci Seville. Available in only three colors white, black, and medium brown the exterior featured many indicators of a Gucci identity. A vinyl top covering only the C pillar and featuring the famous Gucci interlocking double G fabric pattern, the interlocking G on the wire wheel covers, a red-green stripe across the lower edge of the trunk lid, and an interlocking double G hood ornament decorated the exterior. Inside, the headrests and seats wore the double G pattern with a leather trim, the headliner wore the pattern, and the instrument panel bore the iconic Gucci script above the glove box. Inside the trunk was a five-piece set of Gucci luggage. The cost of this package pushed the Seville price tag to about $23,000. Italian opera singer Luciano Pavarotti was seen driving a Gucci Seville during his segment on the CBS television news program 60 Minutes in the late 70s. The Ford Motor Company had success with designer edition Lincoln automobiles in the mid-70s through the 90s. However, Cadillac never produced an in-house designer named product. Equals 1976 a Euro 1979 Seville convertible equals, a number of custom coach builders made modifications to the 1975 to 1979 Seville, to include shortened two-seat two-door convertibles, a two-door convertible with a back seat, a two-door pickup truck, two-door coupes, two and four-door lengthened hood Seville's with a fake spare tire in each front fender, and a lengthened wheelbase standard four-door Seville. Equals market performance equals, overall, the first-generation Seville was not the success GM had hoped for. Buyers were turned off by its having a higher price tag than the standard models. It also failed to attract the younger import-buying audience, especially since luxury makes tended to sell based on brand loyalty rather than price or features. One rather embarrassing study of Seville buyers discovered that they were popular with senior citizens who wanted a Cadillac in a smaller, more maneuverable package. Equals production equals. Equals engines equals. 1980 Euro 1985. The first generation Seville has proved quite successful, however it failed in its primary mission of poaching import buyers and marketing research indicated that the car was popular with older women who wanted a Cadillac in a smaller, more maneuverable size. For the 1980 model year, Cadillac moved the Seville to the 114 in wheelbase K body, based on the front wheel drive E body Eldorado, Buick Riviera, and Oldsmobile Toronado. Returning to some of the original concepts floated for the 1975 edition, the March 2008 issue of Collectible Automobile featured an early concept of what evolved into the downsized 1977 Cadillac DeVilles and Fleetwoods a Euro one of the concepts which was withdrawn looks similar to the second generation Seville. The rear styling was a revival of an appearance Cadillac used in the 1930s, as demonstrated with the Cadillac Series 70 of 1935. 
the long front and the short trunk was a common appearance with large luxury cars during the 1930s to early 1950s, an appearance shared with a Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. The sloping rear was intended to invoke the look of Daimlers of a past era. In the U.S., the bustle back styling was imitated by the 1982 a Euro 1987 Lincoln Continental sedan, and the 1981 a Euro 1983 Imperial Coupe. It was one of the last vehicles designed by GM's Bill Mitchell, who in 1936 was appointed by Harley L as the chief designer in the then newly created Cadillac Design Studio. The new model featured front-wheel drive and independent rear suspension. The Seville initiated features that would become more traditional in later years. In 1981, memory seats a Euro a feature not seen on a Cadillac since the Eldorado Bromes of the late 50s a Euro became available again. This option allowed two memorized positions to be recalled at the touch of a button. Also new for 1981 was a digital instrument cluster. The Cadillac Trip computer was a precursor to this option in 1978. For the 8185 Seville and Eldorado, it was considerably less expensive, at US$200 in 81, and did not contain the many features of Trip computer, just a digital speedometer and fuel gauge. Puncture ceiling tires were also new for 81. In 1982, Seville offered heated outside rear view mirrors with a rear defogger option. Inside, a Symphony Sound stereo cassette tape system was available. For 1983, a new Delco Bose stereo cassette system was offered at US$895. Initially, looking like a standard Delco radio in 1983, from 1984 on it featured a brushed gold look front panel and bulbous lower interior door speaker assemblies. This was also the last year for the availability of an 8-track stereo system for Seville. On the outside, from 1983 through 1985, Seville was available with a full cabriolet roof option, which gave Seville the look of a four-door convertible. In hip-hop culture, this generation of Sevilles were known as slantbacks. Sales were respectable at first, but disastrous experimentation with diesel engines and the ill-fated 1981 V8-6-4 variable displacement engine, along with poor quality control and lackluster performance from engines severely detuned to meet more stringent cafe standards, began to erode the Seville standing in the marketplace. A new but underpowered 4.1-litre V8 was fitted to post-1981 models. It was prone to the block becoming porous and coolant mixing with the oil, resulting in early engine failure. Some 1981-1982 models were also fitted with an optional 4.1-litre Buick V6, which was a reliable enough engine, but was not powerful enough for the Seville's weight and performance was lacking. Equals production equals. Equals engines equals. 1986 a Euro 1991. In 1986, an all-new, much smaller body attempted to combine the crisp angularity of the original Seville with the rounded edges of the new aerodynamic aesthetic. The series featured a transverse mounted V8 driving the front wheels. The smaller size and conservative styling were regarded as bland, and customers stayed away. Despite the lack of popularity, the new Seville Eldorado chassis featured an advanced transmission and engine control system that offered EPA fuel consumption figures of nearly 30 mpg US on the highway using a small fuel-injected V8. The new model featured a worldwide production car first a Euro a computer system that monitored the car's systems and the engine. The BCM ECM was paired with an electronic dashboard using high-intensity vacuum fluorescent displays and utilized GM's expertise derived from the acquisition of Hughes Electronics, makers of communications and spy satellites. Unfortunately, with sales way below expectations the new model was considered a disaster, and an exterior refresh was rushed for 1987 as a 1988 model. This was the final Cadillac Seville generation to have annual facelifts for the grills. The big news for 1988 was the introduction of the Seville Touring Sedan which came equipped with GM's FE2 Touring Suspension. It featured special 15-inch alloy wheels, special springs, rear sway bar, and a special 15.6 to 1 steering ratio for enhanced handling, a grille-mounted Cadillac emblem, special cloison trunk lock cover 
and a unique four-place interior. 1988 Seville Touring Sedan production totaled 1,499 units. The first 1988 STSs were custom-built in June 1988 by Cars and Concepts and announced at the 1988 Detroit Grand Prix. These were available to VIPs within General Motors, the Cadillac division, some major shareholders and a short list of dignitaries. A special label was affixed to the lower corner of the driver's side front door by Cars and Concepts identifying it as one of the original STSs. 2014 survivability rate 14%. For 1989, the first production STSs were sold to the public as a limited edition with an option code of YP6. Features from the initial concept 1988 model were carried over to the 1989 LE production model year with the addition of a retuned European feel suspension package for more precise steering control and firmer feel of the road. The features of the STS over the standard Seville included hand-stitched Beechwood ultra-soft leather seats, anti-lock braking, touring suspension, a 3.3 to 1 drive ratio, 15-inch cast aluminum alloy wheels and Goodyear Eagle GT4 Blackwall tires. Additional streets features, grill with flush-mounted wreath and crest, modified driver's front fender with the cornering light moved to the front fascia and headlight monitors removed. Matching body color front lower edam and body side moldings, matte black export license pocket with bright bead, matte black front bumper impact pads and rear bumper guard vertical inserts, matching body color outside rear view mirrors with black patch, modified rear reflexes, modified export tail lamps with three color European style lenses, STS nameplate on the deck lid and an STS exclusive cloison deck lid lock cover. The street's interior had a 12-way power front seat, manual articulating front seat headrests, center front armrest with cassette and coin cup storage console trimmed in ultra-soft leather, net-type map pockets, rear bucket seats with integral headrests, center rear console and rear storage compartment, leather-wrapped front and rear door trim panels, door pull straps and overhead pull straps, high-gloss elm bell reel wood appliques on door trim panels and switch plates, horn pad and bar, instrument panel and front and rear consoles, beechwood faxed and floor carpet and a deck lid liner and tara material with STS logo. Other standard STS features were, automatic door locks, illuminated driver and passenger side visor vanity mirrors, illuminated entry system, rear window defogger, theft deterrent system and trunk mat. Only four exterior colors were available for the STS this year. White Diamond, Sable Black, Black Sapphire, or Carmine Red 1893 Seville Touring sedans were produced for the 1989 model year. The first 1989 STSs were leftovers from the Cars and Concepts run of the 1988 production year and had the special sticker located on the lower part on the inside of the driver's door. These were produced prior to December 1988 for the 1989 production year and are very rare. The last six digits of these van numbers would be below 808,000. As with the 1988 model, a special 3.25 inches X2 black silver chrome label was affixed to the lower inside area of the driver's side front door by cars and concepts identifying it as one of the original STS's Ref 7 as of 2014. The survivability rate of this 1989 model is at about 3% per the NHTSA and Brock Sturman Auto Survivability Rate Chart, BASSE. In 1990, the Seville got a new fuel injection system which brought the horsepower up to 180. Front park lamps were no longer mounted in the fender on any models, and the Seville streets underwent some major changes. These included new side and rear body color fascias which gave the car a sportier, more aggressive look. Also added was dual exhaust with bright stainless outlets, a larger STS trunk script, standard Teves anti-lock braking system with rear discs, and 16-inch machine finished alloy wheels on Goodyear Eagle GT Plus 4 tires. A driver's side airbag was also added to Seville and STS. While the engine was the same as used in regular Seville models, the transmission had a special final drive ratio of 3 to 33 1 for better acceleration. The 1990 STS also received its own body designation of 6KY69, 
and prices started at $36,320. 1990 STS Limited production totaled 2,811 vehicles. 2014 survivability rate 4% per the NHTSA and Brock Sturman Auto Survivability Rate Chart, BASRC. There were no body changes in 1991, but mechanically there was a new 4.9-liter V8 under the hood coupled to a 4T60E electronically controlled transmission. The new V8 no longer used the AIR system, and additional refinements to the internals brought the horsepower up to 200. The only change to the STS was the removal of the rear bucket seats for a full-width bench, and new front seats with larger side bolsters taken from last year's Eldorado Touring Coupe. 2,206 were produced. 2014 survivability rate 5% per the NHTSA and Brock Sturman Auto Survivability Rate Chart, BASRC. Survivability rate equals approximate remaining vehicles of this production run that are remaining on the earth and drivable. Equals production equals. Equals engines equals. 1992 a Euro 1997. For 1992, Cadillac delivered a new, European flavored Seville with positive reviews as well as customers. The Seville Touring Sedan was Motor Trend Magazine's Car of the Year for 1992. It also made Car and Driver magazine's 10 best list that year. The Seville Streets adopted styling cues from the 1988 Cadillac Voyage concept car. The 1993 limited edition of the North Star system, including the North Star Quad Cam 32 valve aluminum V8 and a new unequal length control arm rear suspension to the STS helped the Seville increase sales. The rear suspension previously featured a single transverse leaf spring like the Chevrolet Corvette. The wheelbase was back up to 111 and with a 203.9 inches overall length. The Seville was divided into two sub-models. The Seville luxury sedan started with the 4.9 LHT 4900 V8 but got a 270 horsepower LD8 Northstar V8 for 1994. The Seville Touring Sedan also started with the 4.9 LHT 4900 in 1992 but was upgraded to the 295 horsepower L37 Northstar in 1993. Base prices for both models peaked in 1996 at approximately $43,000 for the SLS and $47,500 for the STS but the increasingly competitive luxury car market resulted in price reductions for 1997. 0 to 60 miles per hour times were 7.4 seconds for the SLS and 7.1 seconds for the STS. Rain sensing wipers, called rain sense, were standard on the STS. In 1997, the Cadillac Caterer took over from the Sevilla's Cadillac smallest car. Equals production equals. Equals engines equals. 1998 to Euro 2004. The Seville was updated for 1998, and was now built on GM's G platform. However GM chose to continue to refer to it as the K platform. It was the first Cadillac launched with a European type approval number in Europe such as United Kingdom first, and then Germany, Belgium, France, Spain, Italy, Finland and other in markets. All transverse engine front wheel drive Sevilles were built in Hamtramck, Michigan. The wheelbase was extended to 112.2 inches but the overall length was down slightly to 201 inches. The car looked similar to the fourth generation model, but featured numerous suspension and drivability improvements. The Seville Streets became the most powerful front-wheel drive cars on the market at 300 horsepower. The top STS model carried a MSRP of $52,075. The fifth generation Seville was the first Cadillac engineered to be built in both left and right hand drive form. Becoming the first modern Cadillac to be officially imported and sold in South Africa along with other right hand drive markets such as Japan and the United Kingdom. In the past, right hand drive Cadillacs were built from CKD kits or special conversion kits chipped for local conversion. In January 2002, Seville Streets received a new Marn Ride adaptive suspension system. Though the new Marn Ride system was standard on Seville Streets models, it was not available for Seville SLS models.
production of the Seville Streets ended on May 16, 2003. The Seville SLS ended on December 4, 2003. In 2004, only the Seville SLS model was available for purchase. After the Seville was discontinued for 2004, it was replaced by the Cadillac STS. Equals engines equals equals U.S. sales equals In popular culture, in the 1978-1991 TV series Dallas, two Sevilles were used by characters on the show. In season 9, Donna Culver Cripps, played by Susan Howard, drives a second-generation Seville and starting in season 12, Clayton Farlow, played by Howard Keel, drives a third-generation Seville Streets. In the 1979-1980 TV series The Ropers, realtor neighbor Jeffrey P. Brooks III, played by Jeffrey Tambor, drives a first-generation Seville. In the 1979-1981 TV series The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, the title character, played by Claude Akins, drives a first-generation Seville patrol car. In the 1980 Clint Eastwood movie Any Which Way You Can, Eastwood's character orders his pet ape Clyde to scrap the caddy to which Clyde systematically dismantles a first-generation Brown Seville. 1. The 1996 film Daylight features a 1992 Seville as the getaway car a gang of jewel thieves used to evade police, only to crash and cause the explosion that leads to the events of the movie. In Quentin Tarantino's 1997 movie Jackie Brown, Robert Forster's character, Max Cherry drives a first-generation, 1976 blue-on-blue -blue Seville. 2. In the 1997 2010 TV series King of the Hill, Buck Strickland drives a white, fifth generation Seville Streets. 3. In the 2012 TV series Napoleon Dynamite, Grandma drives a beige, second generation Seville. 4. In the 2014 film Tammy, in which Tammy's grandmother drives a powder blue Seville, they take across America to get away from her cheating husband. References 7. Standard Catalogue of American Cars 1976-1999-3rd Edition. Copyright 1999 by Fleming & Kowalk. Pages 167-170. External links, Official Cadillac America Forum, Cadillac Seville Year-by-Year -year Changes.